been a while between off-road races, some 280 days in fact, since cars crossed the finish line at the 2021 Tats Fink Desert Race. Since then, countless hours have been spent in garages right around the country, tinkering, preparing for this very event. The Cobb & Co St George 399 is unforgiving. It's a huge battle for the crews, a real test of setup. Some will fall victim to the 90k course, others may just win. It's also a new era in 2022 as the King Chrome Motorsport Australia Side-by-Side -side Championship joins the AORC at each and every round. This year, slightly different format, longer races, getting the car to the finish line, you know, to, to finish first, you've got to finish. I think the cars are ready. They're, they're actually the best prepared we've been for this event for a while, so looking forward to it. It's long, long course, so it's going to be tough. Got a bit of everything out there. Yeah, champion at the bit, a uh, new car, so, and um, hopefully we get to a full season. It's dusty, it's muddy, it's what we've missed doing so much in recent years. This is the 2022 BF Goodrich Motorsport Australia Off-Road Championship. Let's go racing. Six rounds will make up the BF Goodrich Motorsport Australia Off-Road Championship in 2022, starting here in southeast Queensland, the Cobb Co Hotel St George 399, before a trip to the Victorian New South Wales border for the newest addition on our tour, the Pooncarry Desert Dash. Then, all eyes turn to the iconic Tats Fink Desert Race, a world-renowned event that will push every competitor on two and four wheels to the limit. The Can-Am Love Day 400 joins the AORC in July before a trip to Western Victoria for the Hindmar Shire Rainbow Desert Enduro in the state's wheat belt. The championship wraps up out west with the Black Diamond Drilling Kalgoorlie Desert Race, an event that will finally get its chance to shine on the national stage. Taking place on Mandandanji country, the pit area for this event moved away from its usual home in the dams just outside St George. Those dams now overflowing with water, still bordering parts of the track. With plenty of similar terrain and areas to previous years, the course weaves around farmland and other private property with access kindly granted by the local community. The tight twists and turns likely to make life difficult for many crews entered in this event. While the long course stretches almost 90 kilometres, Friday's action uses just 12 k's of that course for prologue, off-road's version of qualifying. A good result here can make or break a weekend. The further up the front you qualify, the clearer path crews will have throughout the weekend's action. As in previous years, dust was again an issue for crews in St George, making the prologue battle even more significant. With many teams debuting new looks and new cars, there was plenty to play for as the championship fight began in earnest. One of those eager to impress was Toby Waitley, the South Australian swapping out his familiar side-by-side -side turbo for his striking orange trophy truck and Waitley was on a charge from the outset. Plenty of familiar faces starred in Prologue, while some up-and-coming stars of the sport also put their hand up early in St George. Bo Robinson in his striking Geyser Brothers trophy truck was the quickest, edging out Josh Howes and Toby Waitley. 
Oh, it's good, yeah, it's good. It's also been a long time since we had another run in the truck. It's been, I guess, Fink last year was the last run we had with it, so um, no, it's good. Prologue's obviously very important in dusty conditions. Unfortunately, we've got this top 10 shootout and they're going to reverse the grid and it's just turn it on its head, so it's probably not the exact best thing. You're probably better off being 10th, you know, tomorrow to start first. We get a um, clean run. Um, yeah, I believe the car's got it in it, so yeah. Um, Team's, team's put together a mad car, can't complain, everything feels good and um, just like it did last year. So, yeah, if, um, if everything goes to plan, we should be right. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, yeah, I didn't expect to be where I am. Good run, so see how we go tomorrow, see if we can hold it or if not, push up further, just hopefully we don't drop something. So, um, yeah, see how we go tomorrow. In the King Chrome side-by-side -side Motorsport Australia Championship, young gun Joshua Weedman was a surprise inclusion in the outright top 10. The youngster was in red-hot form through the course and staking his claim as an early favourite for the side-by-side -side championship honours. Yeah, um, feels good. The track looks pretty good. It's a bit dusty, but I think it should be a good race. The top 10 fastest drivers had another opportunity to improve on their positions on Saturday morning and earn their place at the front of the field, this time for the top 10 shootout. Josh Howells, Matt Hansen and Toby Waitley all produced times that would see them competitively in the top five. Impressive in prologue, Josh Weedman again turned heads, improving to finish seventh, the only King Chrome side-by-side -side entrant inside the outright top ten. Ryan Taylor moved up seven spots, from ninth to third. The biggest talking point from the session was Bo Robinson. Australian failing to finish his final qualifying lap. Engine dramas leaving him hitching a ride back to the pits. Something in the motor, um, away it goes, a good start of the year and here you go. After plenty of hard work between sessions, the news was good for the Robinson clan. Their Geyser Brothers trophy truck was repaired just in time to make the start of the race proper. While Robinson was back on track, the same couldn't be said for 2012 AORC champion Matt Hansen, who suffered a premature end to his St George 399 campaign, a frustrating exit after posting the second fastest time in the shootout. We had an issue halfway round, um, which has turned out to be an a injector issue, so it just became really luggy out of corners and um, we knew we were having a good run, we didn't have any dust and it was going well, so it would clear itself out top, but just out of corners we were slow and it looks like we can't fix it, it's uh, pulled the engine down to get to the injectors, so unfortunately we're out. <laughs> One finally began in earnest with crews setting out on their first of two laps of the course to begin their championship campaigns. With the sun out and the dust rising, it didn't take long for the course to take its first victim, Toby Waitley. The South Australian had enjoyed a strong start to the weekend but was forced into the pits with a wheel issue, depriving his chances of gaining time on the leaders. Yeah, they clipped a tree out there, there was a big stump on the track, put a hole through the sidewall of the tyre, so we've got a tyre out there, chucked the spare on, but our socket wasn't quite deep enough to get them up tight, so it's come in, we've tightened them up, but they're still not as tight as they're meant to be, they're almost above finger tight, so you'll probably have to stop two or three more times out there and just keep tightening them up until we get the right socket. Taking advantage of Waitley's issues was Ryan Taylor and returning nine-time AORC champion Shannon Wrench, who continued to play catch-up after a challenging prologue. Wrench wasn't the only one to enjoy a solid climb through the field during the event's opening two laps.
Jake Swinglehurst, the pilot of Wrench's championship winning Jimco Buggy, made up almost 30 spots from Prologue, with Prolight pilot Alec Howells jumping into the top 10. However, it was Ali's brother Josh who ended the day on top after overcoming a bent front arm on the first lap. Yeah, we come come out of one of the tree sections. There was a right hand turn, there was no arrows around, and um, found ourselves in a bit of trees and um, cleaned up one on the left hand side. So um, yeah, drove the rest of the race with no front left shock, which was interesting through them trees. And on the second lap, once the the track started running out, it was really bouncing around. So yeah, I don't think it's going to slow us up tomorrow. Hopefully, um, we'll get it fixed, and um, yeah, we'll be back on the track. Amazingly, after his morning dramas, Bo Robinson finished just 40 seconds behind Josh Howells, capping off an amazing recovery. Yeah, no, it was good. Yeah, it was another, another good day. Um, it didn't start off this way, so um, it's a shame that we didn't get to get some clean air. You know, we, we started 10, we had a lot of dust, like got lost a couple of times and everything, so um, it'd be seconds really good and um, we're able to see how we go. So we can keep it up, it'll be, um, be an interesting weekend by the end. It was just as much drama in the King Chrome side-by-side -side Motorsport Australia Championship with youngster Josh Weedman unable to continue his brilliant qualifying form. Fellow side-by-side -side contenders Thomas Swinglehurst and Jackson Evans also had mechanical issues, allowing Jake Williams and experienced campaigner Phil Lovett to occupy first and second in the side-by-side -side championship along with outright top ten finishers. Definitely didn't expect it after that session. In the first lap, we caught up to Jackson Evans really early and we battled his dust, so that was really hard. He had misfortune, did a belt, so we got a bit of clean air. Um, and then, yeah, we just slowly tried to put in some laps and then ran into our own misfortunes, but um, you were able to capitalise on their misfortunes. There were plenty of movers and shakers after the first section of the St George 399. Howells and Robinson eye off a big final day with four different classes featuring in the top 10. Both Greg Gartner and pro light leader Michael Spokes were highly consistent throughout the opening section in their push to replicate last year's podium success. The duo sitting fifth and sixth respectively. The Walkinshaw name is synonymous with motorsport, but it's not a name that fans would immediately associate with off-road racing. This year, the Walkinshaw group take on a new challenge, the full BF Goodrich Motorsport Australia off-road championship campaign. Initially slated to field two cars at St George, the team was only able to have one vehicle ready. The pilot? None other than supercars enduro driver Warren Luff. For Luff, a circuit racing stalwart and motorsport veteran, this event will be his first on the dirt. It's kind of funny, I'm going into this weekend just really not sure what to expect, but for us it's been a, a very short sort of build time to get the car here. Um, so for us as a team, I suppose, just to make it to the start line is going to be great. And, uh, but look, look, really excited for the weekend and just going out there with an open mind. Originally we were talking about just doing Fink, and, uh, and the conversation started with, what do you know about Fink? And I just basically said, I'm in. And they said, but we haven't told you what we're going to do. And I'm like, I know, but I'm in. I love cars and driving and, and rallying and off-road is something that I've always wanted to be able to sort of do. I uh, never had the opportunity until now. So look, I'm really just excited to grab it with both hands and, and enjoy the journey that we're going to go on with this. We really just do want to try and get through this first weekend with, a, with as clean a weekend as we can. As we know in motorsport, things always tend to sort of happen that are sometimes can be a little bit out of your control. Uh, but look, I'm just excited to be here. Everyone in the off-road community has been so inviting and welcoming of us as a team. Um, so yeah, we're just uh, looking forward to, to joining uh, this uh, championship and seeing what we can do. After a consistent start to the event, well and truly in contention for the production four-wheel drive podium. Luff joined the rest of the crews at the start line for Sunday's final day of action. Race leader Josh Howes made the most of a dust-free run into Sunday.
With Bo Robinson eager to catch Howes, there was plenty to play for. But things didn't go smoothly for the West Australian. Yeah, yes, they obviously managed to fix it. We had a good run, we had made a fair bit of time and we were sort of eating into Josh's dust there, it was actually not too bad, I reckon we would have had a good crack at it today, but um, yeah, fortunately yeah, it was something terminal in the motor, so um, here's what it is. With Ryan Taylor just four minutes behind leader Howes, the pro buggies were on top as crews began to cross the line. Greg Gartner remained a contender, the only trophy truck within striking distance and third on the road after Sunday's first two laps. <laughs> Nine-time AORC champion Wrench was not far behind, just eight seconds separating the pair with one lap to run. The King Chrome side-by-side -side championship contenders enjoyed their own battle throughout Sunday morning. Phil Lovett, the leading side-by-side, -side, made his way past Jake Williams, who was yet another casualty of the harsh Queensland conditions. While Simon Evans, Zachary Marsh and Glenn Brinkman enjoyed a battle of their own further down the field. Brinkman sporting a special St George tribute livery for this weekend's event, a project he plans to continue at each AORC round. While things were looking good for Brinkman, a rollover would prove costly for the Queensland driver and his experienced WRC and Dakar navigator, Dale Moskett. Seven right long. Oh, no, oh, no, no. Ah. Okay. In the pro light class, Michael Spokes was unstoppable. A strong performance, seeing him push for an outright podium. St George's success was continuing further down the field, this time for Ali Howes and navigator Sarah Corrigan, the duo cementing themselves in the top ten. It was a bit of a shock, we just did four consistent laps and we had a really good run in terms of a really good section two dust free and yeah we've come back and we're sitting in seventh so we're really happy with that. After a disappointing start to the event, seasoned professional Brett Comiskey was charging through the field in the trophy truck formerly owned by 2021 Fink winner Toby Price. For Luff and the Walkinshaw team, a second place in class was on the cards. But there was no catching Jeff Pickering who continued to show why he's won the class 14 times. So with one lap to run, it's Josh Howells who holds a commanding position. Ryan Taylor remains within striking distance and eager to secure his first podium at the St George 399. Gartner and Wrench enjoying a memorable battle for third, while Michael Spokes and Ali Howells were on top in the pro light class and also sitting comfortably in the outright top ten. Just one lap remaining and the battle for a podium place well and truly alive, all eyes were on the fight for third. Greg Gardner going toe to toe with Shannon Wrench, both seasoned campaigners within the AORC, both hoping to begin 2022 on a high. They remain neck and neck for most of the final section until 20 kilometres from the finish line where Gartner met trouble, a terminal issue all but ending his hopes of a consecutive podium in St George. Yeah, absolutely. After our start today um, with our fuel pressure problems and for some reason that just came good and our second lap was a flyer and um, we just thought the last lap was going to be fantastic and it was. It was pretty good. Shannon had pressure on us. He had, uh, we had an eight second lead on Shannon, so we knew we had to push and unfortunately I think our fuel lean out issue this morning has created a bigger problem for us, so unfortunately. 
With Gartner out, Shannon Wrench was able to claim third place as the final charge for the line began. But the day belonged to Josh Howells and navigator Eric Hume. The pair first finished securing back-to-back -back victories at the St George 399. Back-to-back, -back um, didn't expect that, but yeah, definitely feels good. It was um, without our um, little hiccups along the way, and that's always a thing, that always happens, and um, it was just a way to get over them and move forward, and we were lucky enough to keep the pace when we did have them issues on the first day in the first sector, so yeah, look, we um, we kept uh, kept our cool and pushed through, and um, massive shout-out to my team to um, give me a car today that was possible to race at the pace I needed to race today, so yeah. Unreal. While Howes secured consecutive wins, it was a first ever AORC podium for Ryan Taylor, who impressed throughout the weekend's racing. Speechless, actually. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it was a re really good feeling. Um, yeah, don't know what it was about this weekend, but um, came into it and uh, it, everything just sort of felt good. So we're happy with the prep and everything. The car felt amazing all weekend, so I, I couldn't be happier. Shannon Wrench's return to the AORC was a masterclass, with a third place finish making it a pro buggy lockout on the podium. Yeah, it is good. It's um, yeah, been, been a while between drinks and new car and everything's a bit different than the old one, so to get a finish straight up, that's pretty good and not with very little dramas over the weekend, so um, no, very happy. Behind them, Michael Spokes, Jake Swinglehurst and Ali Howells all confirmed their spots in the top ten. In the King Chrome side-by-side -side Motorsport Australia Championship, it was Phil Lovett who enjoyed his own success and the round win, ahead of Greg Campbell and Zachary Marsh. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, it's good to finish. We've had a few dramas, but uh, when you flog it like I do, well then, it's got to be Lovett proof, you know. We had a target coming up here, we spoke, and um, we can't come away from the first round with no points. So we weren't really targeting to be this high up the field. We were just happy with a good solid finish and good section points. So to be this far up's a bonus. Yeah, it was good. We had a rough start in prologue, almost burning to the ground, but everyone sort of helped in and got it all sorted. So we had a long weekend to fight back, but worked out in the end. So it's a fresh looking top 10 for the St George 399, led by Howells, Taylor and Wrench on the podium. Michael Spokes finishes fourth, while Jake Swinglehurst and Ali Howells make their first ever appearances in the top 10. A late charge from Matt Huxley saw him leapfrog side-by-side -side winner Phil Lovett to move into seventh place in the outright standings, while Brett Comiskey also scored a top ten finish with ninth, an impressive recovery from what had been a tough start. With a number of the trophy truck contenders failing to finish, Comiskey ended the event as the top-ranked trophy truck driver, picking up the extreme two-wheel drive class win alongside navigator Corey Cooper. Michael Spokes and Brad Rogan's slick outright fourth place saw them rewarded with the Pro Light class victory. Production four-wheel drive reigning champions Jeff Pickering and Dylan Watson began their title defence on a high, winning the class in their trusty Mitsubishi Pajero. While Lovett was the winner of the side-by-side -side pro class, John Weiss and Chris Collins picked up the side-by-side -side sport class win in what was a thrilling battle. So that wraps up another successful Cobb Co Hotel St George 399. A full breakdown of the most up-to-date championship points tally can be found at aorc.com.au. A new adventure awaits the AORC next, this time in New South Wales, with the Poon Carey Desert Dash on May 6 to 8. The fight for the championship is well and truly on. This has been the King Chrome Side by Side and the BF Goodrich Motorsport Australia Off-Road Championship.